In this video, we'll look at the clothing parameters for exporting from Marvelous Designer and importing into Houdini. There are things you need to be aware of in order to make both applications happy. I'll also show you what happens when things aren't right, so you'll develop a keen eye for debugging your scenes. Now, I already have clothing laid out for this, so this is not a Marvelous Designer tutorial, it's a Marvelous Designer 2 Houdini workflow tutorial. Let's... So I'm going to load in the project I already have. So this is clothing that has already been made, a jacket and a pair of pants. Now I need to export this into Houdini. One of the first things you need to do after you have the clothing all sewn up, all laid out and everything, is that you have to fix the UVs. Come over here and there is a, a UV editor. And this is what you need. I'm going to need more real estate, so I'm going to... okay. So you can see that, okay, this is the jacket. So sometimes it's hard to tell in the UV editor. You can select it in your pattern over here in your pattern window over here. So that makes it a little easier. Over here, this would be the pants. And what you do is that it doesn't come this neat. So I had to play around with these. Like it'll come up all bunched up together like this sort of like. And then you have to like put it together like a jigsaw puzzle so that it fits nicely in its own UV squares. And as you can see, so hopefully you can see these squares. Each square is sort of like a UDIM. It's a UV square. So we have six UV tiles here and it is using UDIM. Uh, so Marvelous Designer does support UDIMs, which is awesome. So you can have your whole clothing bundle in one file. Uh, Substance Painter supports UDIMs, which is perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my 3D window up here. I'm gonna export this out, the clothing test because I'm going to give it some thickness. So I'm going to purposely do the wrong thing. I'm going to choose thick and I'm going to uncheck this avatar because I don't want the avatar to come with it. So that's the only changes I'm going to make. I'm going to okay this. Now let's drop in a file. Let's go to that clothing test and it brings it in. Now let me clip this. This is what I wanted to show you. If you look carefully enough, there's actually thickness here. Maybe if I go in closer. An easier way to, to show you. I'm going to select some of this stuff. Parameter out so I can actually paint on some of this. Move some of these. Around. You can see that it's, it's actually stuck. And there's, there's stuff... I'm painting through it. Oh, that's not helpful. Painting only what I see. Okay, this is a bit better because I was painting through it. So this time I'm not. Let's move this out. So you can see that there's thickness here. I'm moving the outer layer, but the inner layer is still intact. So we can actually take this a bit further and I'll blast it. So you can see a hole that comes through here, and, but there's still a layer in between. So that's, there's physical thickness. So if you were like 3D printing this, this would be perfect. Because this is what you need. You need watertight, watertight geometry if you wanted to print this jacket out. However, Houdini doesn't really like thickness added to the geometry. It, it, Houdini already has a thickness attribute. So it needs the clothing in a thin piece. It needs it as a plane, a grid plane or, or one piece. Let's go back into Marvelous Designer and export it one more time. Clothing test. Let's go to Marvelous Designer. Okay, I'm going to replace this again. This time I'm going to be using thin. So I'm not going to be using the thickness one. I'm going to be using the thin one. And I'm not going to, I'm going to uncheck this again. The only things I'm going to do. And press OK. Go back into Houdini. And we're just going to refresh this. And instantly our edit is gone just because the geometry has changed too. So what I can do is the same thing again. Let's just do that again. Edit, paint, paint some of this, and then I'm just going to move some of this out. If we move it out, it's physically moving the other side. Okay, we can't see, just because the normals are bent. But if I uncheck it, you can see through the other side. I don't know if this... Here, let me puncture through this side as well, so maybe then you can see. So if we look through this, I can actually see a hole. I can see the one on the other side. It's no longer watertight. It's just one plane. It's one plane of geometry. And this is perfect for Houdini's vellum system. 
this is very important. Otherwise, it, the Houdini's vellum system will solver will not understand this at all. Now, all of these have these notes. I actually have more detailed notes attached to each one, but I've removed it because that's only available for the perk members. Here you see just the titles, which is really helpful still. I'm gonna go over the steps for setting up the clothing that we just exported from Marvelous and imported into Houdini. We're going to set up the vellum stuff in Houdini. You come here, uh, clothing, I'm gonna hide everything there and I'm not gonna template because I want you to see what I'm importing. So this is just importing the clothing as I've shown you how to do it from Marvelous Design. So this is just importing that clothing. Now this is making it much smaller as in a hundred times smaller. And that goes back to that measurement, aligning the measurement system between Marvelous Designer and Houdini. Houdini is in meters. It'll read everything in meters. It thinks the whole world is in meters. Marvelous Designer is putting outputting in centimeters. So to make them work, you just have to put down a simple transform node and scale it down. That's the only way I know how to do it so far. I'm still a newbie at Marvelous Designer, but this was simple enough. Or you can even eyeball it. So we're going to just render the clothing and I'm going to look at what my character looks like in the pose mode. So I'm going to put template this. Now, I don't see it at all because the character is really, really small down here. And that's where we have to go up here into this smaller one. And it gets oop, pushed down here so you can see what's happening. And it's a perfect fit. Now, welds. That goes into another issue. In Marvelous Designer, you'll see that these... Okay, I'm going to delete this, uh, this, this cache because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to hide this. Each patch here. So I'm going to click some of this stuff to show you. This is a patch. And if we look carefully, it's only choosing the sleeve. Because this is only the sleeve clothing patch. When you import this into Houdini, remember what we had picked. We had selected. I'm just going to keep abusing this clothing test. I just need this to pop up. Now this is the th where it comes in it has multiple objects. When you have this select, uh, Marvelous Designer will not weld them together for you. If you choose the single object, look, you can choose to weld it. But I find that Houdini has trouble understanding this and it loses all the UVs and it just gets, it becomes a mess. I ended up using the multiple objects and I'll weld it back in Houdini. And it's actually really simple too. It just drop down a fuse and it'll it'll work for the the simple cases that I've I've done. I haven't done anything too crazy just because I'm still new. Just keep this in mind. The multiple objects keeps the UVs intact and the UVs are important because we're going to send this off into painter and that's where the magic really happens. That's where you get the clothing to really shine. Now, as I was trying to say, the clothing patch is going to be one object. So I'm just going to show you the sleeve in Houdini. I'm going to color this black because we're not going to be using this. Primitives, okay. Oops, I need it. And I'm going to select this clothing patch. Okay, this is the sleeve. And if we move this, it's just going to move the sleeve. Oops, uh, the group one, sorry. There you go. There you go. See, it's only going to move the sleeve. You, nothing is attached. They're not welded together. They're not physically welded. And that goes into the next spot where we just drop down a fuse node. Literally, it, it should be right on top of each other. So this snap distance, the default snap distance will should work perfectly. And once you do this, let me drop another one because the point numbers have changed after you weld it. In the next video, we finally get into simulating the clothing in Houdini using the vellum solver. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.